Hello there, another late video and another house update. But don't worry because in a couple of videos time I have actually got an alternative brick based toy thing to review which was sent to me which I'm really quite excited about, genuinely. Before I get onto the house stuff, a little bit of a channel update. You may remember that before I uh, moved house I did say there was a big kind of announcement coming. Now that announcement has taken several um, diversions. Um, I can tell you that originally I was going to end the channel, okay, not just not upload any videos unless I really, really fancied it. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just upload, I'm going to try and upload every week, which I am kind of just about sticking to mostly, but as you may have seen from my last week's video, which was a review of a socket tester, I knew it wouldn't do particularly well. It's always quite surprising how badly videos can do nowadays on YouTube. Maybe a grower, maybe after six months, a year, it gets some traction, unless that avenue of YouTube has also been eroded, which I suspect it may have been. Um, I'm just going to upload things that I really fancy uploading. A lot of people will take a video like this and then send me a load of comments on here. In fact, in the last week, I've had at least, I think I've had three emails being very kind, offering advice, or or one actually suggested a load of ideas. I don't want to appear rude, but I'm just not interested because I've been doing YouTube for years and years. And when people suggest things to me, they're not new things that I haven't heard of before. I know you have to upload regularly. I know... There are certain things that do well on YouTube and you should try and upload those things. Well, actually, it's not as simple as that anymore. I used to do that all the time. That's how I got over 13 million views on this channel, by finding good topics and making repeat videos. I know all these things. Trust me. Um, I do think there's been a change in YouTube. And at the same time, I have kind of self-destructed the channel by uploading things that I knew wouldn't do that well. Um, so it's a combination of things. I'm not interested in trying to chase the algorithm. I don't really care at this point if YouTube decides to destroy my channel altogether. Still brings in some residual income from previous successful videos. I've got some generous patrons. One of the reasons I carry on on here is to keep them entertained, to give them some value for the money that they are pledging to me monthly. I'm going to upload what I fancy. Time will tell if the channel snowballs, but I doubt it because, you know, it's actually like buying a lottery ticket YouTube, as I've said a million times before. I've actually been very lucky to have success in the areas that I have had success. Food videos, Lego videos, money related videos, scam videos. I have had a lot of success on this channel and it was going to end sometime. But, you know, I kind of it's a roller coaster, isn't it? It could well improve again in months to come. So that's it. Really. I just wanted to say, you know, thanks for the emails. But honestly, I know what. I should be doing on this channel and is there a great big crack over there anyway that's a huge amount of rambling which i may have to cut down significantly uh, let me show you what i've done to the house it's been another couple of weeks i think firstly there's no fire the fire is gone i think it was quite a good one apparently the gas engineer said that they're the kind of pride and joy of lots of elderly people now um the kind of glowing logs and things but gas fires just really aren't in vogue, are they? And even if they come back, they're not going to look exactly like that. So as nice as that was at the time, it really had to go. And I just don't like gas, really. I've got a kind of phobia of it because I haven't really been around it that much. I know it's irrational. We'll put an electric stove one there instead, which will look modern, more modern hopefully be in keeping with the fireplace because as you can see the fireplace is actually really kind of knackered and old the dirt at the bottom there is just dirt it's not staining so hopefully we can kind of clean it up and make it look all right we may even try painting it we'll see um it is just a faux thing it's not brick at all um so i don't know whether painting it will make it look really really crap 
but we shall see. So there's a great big hole now, six inch hole out to the um, outside. So I've cut a brick ready to cement into place and I'll put a bit of board there and maybe cover it up and hope that we can buy a, an electric stove that's tall enough to cover that hole. Now you may notice that I'm very well illuminated. That's because I got these cheap light bulbs from um, b and I think it was, or maybe Home Bargains. Uh, they're each one of these is a 60 watt equivalent. So this is like, basically you could host a football match in here now. I don't like having ceiling lights on. I think it looks really tacky. Um, just me being uh, snobby, but actually, you know, it's nice and bright like this. And so if I wanted to do some Lego or something or a puzzle, then uh, this would be perfect for that. You know, sometimes you do need a ceiling light on, don't you? Uh, what else? Now this Flotex carpet is revolting. Okay, I want to take this up. Does it contain asbestos? But we're going to put lime though down there rather than laminate. What have we got going on in the garage of dreams? Oh, we've got some, we've got... Uh, fluorescent bulbs that take forever to turn on. We've got a load of offcuts of uh, laminate. We've got a garden table. We've got a workbench. Oh, I wonder what they could be for. Probably laminate flooring, because it's pretty obvious really, isn't it? It's gonna turn on this light. Look, I've done all these lights, I've done all these. I got impatient and did them. I thought it's gonna be months and months, probably six months, maybe more, before I get round to doing the hall because it's going to be the last room that I'm going to decorate myself uh, so I thought I'm just going to replace the light switches now incidentally while I'm on while I'm here I really want to replace the thermostat with um I think a nest central heating have any of you got nest is it any good did you install it yourself is it easy let me know or do I need to get um, a plumber or an electrician in an electrician probably what else okay I won't show you in there I'll show you this here we go I took the security system off the wall and removed all the wires and filled them. Obviously it's not very neat. I'm now gonna have to, turns out this has had wallpaper and lining paper on. So I'm now gonna have to strip this wall and put some new lining paper on. But I think it already looks a little bit kind of neater like that, um, even though it's an absolute state because that thing was just so old. Now out of it, there were six wires going to various locations, one of them, was up here. There was a sensor in the corner. There's a sensor in the corner of two of the bedrooms as well. And there was also a item there on the wall, which wasn't there, for resetting the security system. And uh, I've removed them all. Bit nerve wracking because I didn't know whether they were live. So, you know, I touched it with my tongue to make sure they were live. And then when I was certain that they were, then I jabbed my screwdriver in. Not really. I um, was 99.99% .99 sure that they weren't live, but I have an electrical tester that told me they were. And um, logic was right, i.e. there wasn't any power going into any of them because the fuse had been taken out and the device for checking liveness was wrong. Anyway, this room, I'm delaying the good part, okay? This room, I've taken the carpet up, so it's just underlay. Uh, this room is going to be glossed probably this weekend. Oh, what do you think of that? That's uh, It's actually grey, but when you turn it on, it goes sort of creamy. I think it goes quite well with the colour of the room. That was 20% um, off in B&Q, would you believe? Um, yeah, very echoey, isn't it? They're all going to be echoing my rooms with laminate flooring down, aren't they? So you remember all that laminate flooring waste in the garage? I've laminated a room, if that's the right word for it. Here we go. Here it is. Here is the box room with um, another one of the same lampshades, which I think looks a little bit different in here, maybe. Um, but yeah, it's exactly the same lampshade, but a little bit smaller, actually, I should say. Um, we've got these mustard curtains and the grey curtain rail. Don't like the mustard curtains. They were actually from somewhere else, from my parents' house, from my bedroom there. Uh, I'm going to replace them eventually. But they're blackout curtains, they're from Dunelm. They will do for the time being. I suppose the main thing in here then is that I have done the floor. Yeah, look, I've done the laminate flooring with the beading all around the edge. Look at that. Isn't it great? 
I'm actually really happy with how it's how it's gone. I think it looks really good. Um, I like the finish. We were worried it's going to be a little bit stripy. It does kind of look stripy if you look at it all like that. That will be my thumbnail. There we go. Um, you don't notice the stripiness when you're in here. Uh, a couple of things. God, it's it was hard work. It knackered me out. Back aches. I'm tired. My fingers feel achy. Oh, it's really just incredible hard work but you do get into a rhythm with it and you've got to be sensible because I was using a jigsaw don't want to cut my fingers off so you have to be awake and careful when you're doing it you have to have your expansion gap all the way around the edge of the room because it will expand in the summer and then buckle if you don't do that I decided to undercut the door jams as they're called so that the laminate could go underneath it but I then had to cut it one of the sides again today because I didn't do it quite right and I started to panic that if the laminate expanded it would um, buckle up but I think there is more than enough expansion gap now we shall see at the end of the day but I can't see it buckling now it's got room to maneuver everywhere I wasted loads of boards practicing as we saw in the garage just a few ends that I got a little bit wrong um, and then when I got to the pipes here, I just, I cocked up these three thin boards at the end multiple times because it's difficult to cut them lengthways. It's difficult to get the, well, you have to, I think, drill the holes in the holy boards, holy boards, and then, um, and then cut lengthways. It's been a learning experience and um, I think I finally, got it right so hopefully there'll be less wastage in the next room another reason that there was wastage in this room notice it's exactly it's what's well, almost exactly two boards in width which means there's a tiny tiny board at the end of every odd row now i was able to take the rest of that board and put it as use the half board as the next row if you like but that did waste about a third of a board every time. And then at the end of that row, you then get another um, half a board, which then wastes like slightly less than half a board. So yeah, one of those could be used somewhere else, but I'm not super convinced. It's actually quite a mathematical problem to, to work out while you're doing it. And I did just spend sort of, an hour and a half sitting here staring at the floor thinking can I do it a different way but I think the fact of the matter is this room is just an unfortunate size so for instance the next room I calculate will be slightly shy of three boards in length okay and what that means is that there'll be basically no well there'll be a tiny tiny bit of wastage on the first row and then the second row will be half a board one end and half a board the other end so there'll be no wastage which unfortunately does mean that the wastage from the other room won't kind of get used i don't think and maybe it'll get used somewhere you know the hall is quite an odd shape so it may be that it's that it'll be useful here i suppose if i go wrong with a board it might end up being useful uh, the beading looks pretty neat i think there's a few options about how you finish these bits down here but i just decided to do straight edges there um, and i did sort of curvy edges around the um, pipe surrounds pipe surrounds are from b and q they're not exactly the well they're completely the wrong color aren't they but they are the closest match believe it or not that i could find i struggled with the beading okay uh, I got a mitre box down there, just tried to use it, thought 45 degrees was 40, 45 degrees, I stuck it in and sawed them, but none of the 45 degree edges were joining up to form 90 degrees. So I looked uh, up a guide online, which is what you should do first really, and found that you're supposed to always cut on the opposite edge of the mitre box. Did that and you got perfect 90 degree corners. So I had to go back and change a few of them. But actually the beading was the real fun bit, to be honest. And then gluing it was a pain, but I got into a bit of a rhythm there as well because the glue spills out all over, all on top of the beading. 
Uh, but thankfully, I got good quality. It's not in here. Vitrol or Vitrex or something. Uh, laminate flooring glue and it dries completely clear and I wiped off all the excess so it just looks really neat. Um, currently propping all this up here because this side and the other side are still drying. They're pretty well dry now but they need to cure properly. This is it basically. Very happy. I think the room is unrecognisable now compared to how it was. I will have to do before and afters um, eventually. Just very happy. So what's next? Next, we are um, gonna paint the gloss in here and then I'll do the flooring in here. That probably, I mean, basically you have to leave the gloss to dry for at least a week. And even then it's a tiny, tiny bit, not tacky, but if you break the surface of it, it's, it's still wet underneath. I think gloss takes like about a month to dry properly. So it's going to be at least a couple of weeks before this is laminated. Um, but once it is, then we can get some furniture in here. Eventually we are going to replace these doors, but I'm going to wait until there's a number of doors and then ring um, a carpenter friend to come and do it. So we get, we're getting there. I think I'm making a lot of progress. Hopefully you can see that because for me, it's all very incremental. But for you, hopefully these updates are quite exciting. Um, and then once the, that room's done, then we move on to this one. Um, yeah, all this stuff will go into the other rooms mostly, uh, but all this DIY stuff won't. I'm gonna try and get this room done before Christmas. I think that's possibly a little bit optimistic, actually, given how long it took me to do that room. Um, but that's my aim anyway, and then concentrate on the lounge and the hall sometime early in the new year. It's getting dark, it's sad, isn't it? Anyway, that's just a little bit of an update for you. Sorry, it's, sorry about the rant at the beginning and sorry about the length of this, but I just wanted to show you what I've done. Oh, one more thing, one more thing, like Columbo, one more thing. These laminate flooring, they've got a really, I wouldn't have chosen this, okay? They've got a sort of a gap between them, but it's not a gap because you can't get anything between them. And if you have two boards and you try and join them together, they still look like that. And they look like that in the shop as well. But everybody who sees them looks at the floor and then goes, have you joined them together properly? Which is a little bit unfortunate, but they are joined together properly. And I quite like the look now. They're meant to look like sort of proper floorboards, which do have a gap between them. Back to work tomorrow, I had a couple of days off. Oh. Anyway, thank you to Magnanimous Meg, George Foote, Ross Carter, and Jennifer Jones, who are extremely generous patrons. Thank you for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, because, you know, the algorithm's so good to me, isn't it? Uh, I'll see you next time for another video.